Okay, I got a, a number of requests this week uh, for um, the topic of fertilizers and how to fertilize bonsai. Uh, in particular, one was asking, uh, or one person was asking about how to fertilize azaleas in particular. But I just want to kind of go over the basics of, of uh, fertilizing your bonsai and kind of explain some of the uh, the products that are out there and different techniques and when to apply and when not to apply and then kind of get maybe into more specifics about the azaleas and other trees later on in this video. Um, there's so much to cover in this. There's so much to uh, fertilizing so um, I'm gonna try to get in as much as I can in this video but again there's probably gonna be more questions if you do have questions after the video feel free to send me an, uh, an email or a comment to this video and I'll, I'll do my best to answer any of your questions so the most important thing um, in my my opinion is when to fertilize and it really depends on uh, the type of tree that you're working with deciduous trees you you want to fertilize uh, through spring and all the way up until fall but after fall you don't want to fertilize because the tree is no longer taking in nutrients uh, because it's dropping its leaves and it's preparing to go dormant um, it's already stored enough energy to then come uh, to get through the winter time and in spring pop out new growth at that at that point you're going to you know supplement its its energy by giving it more fertilizer at that point but don't fertilize during dormant periods it's it's only going to uh, clog the clog the roots and uh, it's not going to be absorbed by the tree and you don't want a tree you know sometimes when it gets a little bit warm in the winter time uh, it, it can get full to think it's it's spring and if it's got the energy and got the food to to, to uh, start popping out new growth it may do that and then when another cold front comes through, you now have a tree that's, that's uh, new tender growth is now you know, being destroyed and it's using up energy that it could have used in the springtime. So don't fertilize deciduous trees um, after fall. The difference uh, for, for tropical trees uh, is you wanna fertilize them all year long. You wanna have a time release on there because you need those roots stimulated. Those are the trees you're going to protect in the wintertime so they don't really go dormant. So you're going to have them inside or in the garage or somewhere where it's, it's warm enough that they can continue to grow. They might not thrive during the winter the winter time, but you still want some sort of time release so that they, they continually will uh, absorb food and produce you know, chlorophyll to, uh, to produce food for the tree and to stay stimulated. So that's the differences. Uh, evergreens also fall under the, uh, the category of of the deciduous tree. For the, for the most part, there are two different types of fertilizers. There's organic and then there's man-made. Organic fertilizers are things like fish emulsion, blood meal, bone meal, um, things like that. Things that you'd find in nature that are just processed and captured and then applied to your tree. Um, then there's, there's man-made. Man-made is gonna be like miracle Grow, Peters, anything that's processed. Um, to, to you know, through chemicals to to produce something that's going to stimulate the tree and give it the, give it the energy it needs to uh, to really thrive and to grow very fast. Under those two categories, you also have time release and then you have uh, instant feeding uh, fertilizers. The uh, the time release are ones that will break down slowly and redu uh, re uh, release a little bit of, of nutrients every time you water or every time the tree gets wet. Uh, it'll slowly break down. Usually it's a 90 day period for, for a time release to break down. That includes fertilizer cakes and um, uh, an example of something like uh, miracle Grow um, in this type of thing or an Osmocote. Um, which are you know just simple little pellets that you sprinkle you know in the soil and also on top just so that they get a little bit of feeding constantly throughout the growing season. It really doesn't matter if it's a man-made or organic fertilizer. You're going to find on the on the packaging, and it used to be a little bit more prominent, but lately they're kind of hiding this, and I don't know why. The numbers got a lot smaller than they used to be, or I'm getting older, and my eyesight's going. Not sure which. I'm just going to say the packaging got smaller, but you'll see three numbers, and each of those those. Uh, uh, elements actually do specific things for the tree. There's an easy way to remind, remind yourself of what they actually produce by just thinking of shoots, roots, flowers, and fruits. Now the first one is shoots, and that's your nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen is, is essential to help uh, promote uh, the, the development of uh, chlorophyll in the branches. That's why you get that greening when you give this, and it'll actually uh, help promote the, uh, the growth of the branches and everything on top of you know, the foliage of the tree. The next one, that's for your roots. And that's, that's also um, very important because you, you need to keep the tree um, healthy below the soil line. And the last one, which is potassium, that's important for, for two things. Well, flower, flowers and fruits, uh, it'll, you'll, if you're ever deficient in that or if your tree's not you know, blossoming out or not flowering out, it's, it's most likely that you're, you're not having enough uh, potassium in your in your uh, fertilizer so you just want to give it a little boost and you'll see things called uh, bloom burst or, uh, booster or or things like that because that's specifically what they do they are they're there put you know larger fruit or larger um, uh, blossoms or flowers on your trees one thing I do want to point out though um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's very tempting to find the highest numbers uh, in each three columns and just kind of give that to your plant and just assume that's going to be the best thing for it. It, it, it may be depending on the stage of your tree. Um, if you have a tree that you're just starting out with, you know, either pre bonsai or it's just gone into the bonsai pot and it needs a, a lot of branching and a lot of new development, yes, of course, you wanna, you're going to want to get that, the roots established, so you're going to give it a high second number. You want to get um, a lot of new growth going, so you're going to want to get a lot of nitrogen, you know, a nice first number, and really boost it up. You know, uh, things like Miracle Grow or Peter's 202020, those are developed to make your tree grow as fast as possible. And that's the type of thing that you want when you're first developing a tree. You don't need the, the real low numbers. However, it's nice to mix them up once in a while. You know, put in you know a lot of Miracle Grow once you know every so often, but then maybe throw into you know just an organic once in a while, just to kind of keep the tree if it's missing something in there, just a, a little bit different of a of a, of a meal. Um, but if you have a tree that's getting close to being um, fully designed and well established in a pot, the last thing you want to do is keep making those roots, those roots grow because it's now going to get root bound. And the last thing you want to do is give that more, you know, more food so the roots will develop even further and it's just going to get tighter and tighter in that pot. So, you know, you'd want to back up, back up on that second number. And also if your tree's uh, very compact, you've got nice uh, tight branches and it's looking really like a finished tree. If you start pumping in nitrogen and give it that first number really, really high, it's going to want to put out new shoots and you're going to just keep trimming them back off. So just, you know, at that point, all you're going to want to do is just make this thing flower, look as pretty as possible, green it up. So maybe a high third number and a 003, 006, something like that. That's the kind of thing that you want to have for a nice uh, established tree. Not, you know, um, and again, early in the spring, give it some food so that it can actually put out a new flush of leaves. But after that, back off on that high number uh, just so that it can uh, stay compact and you're not constantly trimming and trying to keep that tree in the shape that you want it to be in. Now, specifically for azaleas, I just want to point out there's, there's, there's a, um, fertilizing those is a little bit different. After they set the, you know, what they normally do is they, they will set their buds in the, in, the, in the fall. So after they set their buds, no more fertilizing. Let them go all the way through dormancy, all the way through the winter time, and into spring. Let them start to bump, you know, pop out some new leaves, and wait till they flower. After they flower, or when they're finished flowering, then you can start fertilizing. But don't flower, don't fertilize prior to that. Uh, what's going to happen if you do? You've got a lot of growth, and it's just going to cover up the, the flowers. So you're going to have more growth. You're going to have all this foliage over there, and you you know you won't see the the flowers like you want. And in an azalea, all you want to see is a flower. You know the whole tree just should be loaded with them. So don't fertilize until uh, after the, um, the the flowers are already gone. And again, um, if you're gonna if you're gonna repot, repot then fertilize. Don't don't you know fertilize before you're going to do repotting. Try and get that tree established, get it in there, so then as soon as you give it some food, it's going to send out those new roots and get itself well established. Applying fertilizers, uh, keep in mind, now your bonsai soil, which I've talked about in a lot of my other videos, it doesn't contain any nutrients. So all the food your tree is going to get is going to come from you by fertilizing. Fertilize, I usually do it in the morning or, or later in the, the evening, just so it has, the tree has some time to absorb this in. Um, I don't really, I, I kind of leave a time release or a fertilizer cake on the surface of the, uh, of the bonsai soil, uh, just so that every time it water or every time it rains, the tree's going to get some fertilizer. But if you're putting in a liquid fertilizer, you're not going to want to you know, put this on and water it maybe an hour or two later because you're just going to rinse the, the fertilizer completely out of the tree. So make sure that you put it on and let the tree get a chance to absorb it into, in, in through the roots uh, before it gets any more uh, further watering. Um, just about a week ago, the length of these, these shoots was only maybe you know, a, a few inches and it was really struggling. Even though I was fertilizing this tree, it wasn't popping. So we've had rain for the past couple days here in Florida and it has gone crazy. Uh, the reason why rainwater uh, contains a lot of nutrients as well. There's a lot of nitrogen in it. So when it rains, that's why your trees look a lot greener. And again, nitrogen does what? Boost your, 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 your foliage, the shoots. So that's why it's going to be a lot fuller, a lot greener after a rain. And you just see the trees just going, you know, even in nature, not necessarily in a bonsai pot. You see them all over right now, just popping like crazy. It's that whole, you know, April showers bring May flowers thing. When it gets the rain, that's where all the energy comes for the tree. And it gets that, you know, gets everything flowing. Uh, rainwater also does is there's a lot of uh, sulfur in the air. And what happens is when it rains, it collects that sulfur. And sulfur helps promote the, uh, the amino acids. Uh, that are or that are needed for the tree's development, and so uh, rainwater also is the perfect pH. There's so many benefits to rainwater that will just um, any problem that a tree might be having because of watering. You know, if you're using out of the tap or you're getting a lot of chlorine and things like that, this will come in and stabilize it for you. There's so much more to talk about 
with fertilizers. And there's so many other things that you can add, such as uh, Super Thrive or, or Dynagro, or there's, there's a, number of, a number of chemicals out there that you can add that will do specific things. Um, even Ironite, which is not really a fertilizer, but will green up your tree. Um, those are the kind of things we'll talk about you know, further down the line. But again, if you have any questions, and I tried to cover as much as I could with this video, but I don't want to get too long because I know you'd rather be outside working on your trees, send me a, send me a note. Be sure to subscribe somewhere up here um, to, this, to my channel so that you're not missing out on any videos. Recommend these to other people. I hope you found this information helpful. And if, again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be talking to you again next week.